Hello friends, I'm having this paper here, 7th November 2018, Pure Physics, paper 1, multiple choice. It's supposed to be f one hour, but hope we're not going to take one hour. Um, go through it, because it's just almost the same as 5124. Just go through it. It's all beautiful physics. Let me get to question 1. Okay, so if I make any errors here, um, just patch up. Patch up whatever small, small things I may uh, overlook because the stuff is a lot, man. So just patch up and mend up and just do what you can and then eventually do your thing and then clear your physics and then move on to the next level of life. So question one. The diagram below shows an instrument being used to measure the diameter of a small ball bearing. This is the micrometer screw gauge. Uh, if the instrument has a zero error of negative 0 0.02 millimeters, what is the diameter of the wire? Okay, the diameter of the wire. If the error is negative, you have to add to your final answer. If your zero error is positive, you have to subtract. Okay, so my final answer there comes out as 5.30 millimeters. How did I read that? This is my 5 millimeters, and then this is 25, 26, 27, 28, but this is read as 0. Point something something millimeters. So this is 0. 0.25 millimeters. This is 0. 0.3 uh, zero millimeters. So this is actually 0 0.8 millimeters. Okay, and then the other one is 5.0 millimeters So this scale check out the scales in short. So my final answer comes out as 5.28 And since my error is point a negative point zero two, I simply add it I add it there then my final answer comes out comes out as 5.3 millimeters second question uh, the diagram below shows the pendulum with a bulb uh, swinging from A to C and back. Okay, if it takes 10.4 seconds for 20 oscillations, how long does it take for the bulb to swing from A to C? When you check out that diagram there, A to C that is half a cycle. So they want half a period. The time for half a cycle, you know, half period. So I simply calculate for period, then I divide period by two because they're looking for half period, half a cycle. Uh, a, full, a full cycle takes uh, time referred to as one as period, but half a cycle will take half a period. So formula for period is 10 at t is equals to time taken over number of oscillations. Therefore, time taken is 10.4 seconds, then oscillations are 20. So when I work this one out, my answer comes out as 0.52. Um, seconds then I divide by 2 then finally my answer is 0.26 seconds therefore my answer here is A okay we'll get to the next question the diagram below shows a porter carrying clay soil from point A to point B um, the changes occur to the what changes occur to the mass and weight of the clay soil at B therefore there is mass there there is weight so mass remains constant always but weight increases how does weight increase you should understand say weight increases the more you get closer to the center of the earth therefore if you look at our, our planet for example you have more weight at the north or south pole than at the equator because the north and south pole are much closer to the center of the earth the higher you go into the sky the less weight you're going to have and eventually you'll be weightless and you'll be in space for um um, three liquids uh, were poured into a beaker of the same mass as shown below. Okay, beaker of the same mass, meaning the mass of the beakers are, are, are ignored. Which statement about the densities of the liquids is correct? Therefore, I to calculate the masses, the densities for beaker one, beaker two, and beaker three. I realize the density for beaker two is twice the density of beaker. I mean, the density of beaker three is twice the density of beaker two. Okay. The density here is twice than this one. So when I look, when going through the answers, my correct answer was coming out as liquid three. Therefore, this three has twice the density of liquid two, which is true. Okay. Um, next question. There five diagram below shows a strip of paper tape that has been pulled under a vibrating arm of a moving object. That's a ticker tape timer. The arm is vibrating regularly, making five dots per second. Fifty dots per second. 50 dots per second. Which statement describes the motion of the object? It moved at steady speed and then slowed down. If this is a direction of movement, it means this was the first dot which was created. And then the paper kept on moving in this direction. And then the last dot created was this. Therefore, when you look at this space here and this space here and this space, they seem to be almost the same. And then these spaces begin to reduce, meaning the dots are beginning to be made because the paper is beginning to move slowly. The faster the paper, the more space the dots will be. So my answer there was D. Number six, a motorcycle traveling at 20 meters per second takes five seconds to stop. Its average retardation is 
negative 4. My formula which I used here is this, therefore negative 4 meters per second was the rate at which its velocity was reducing. Number 7, which of the following has an acceleration of 5 meters per second? A, uh, what? I didn't solve this one. One minute, let me just solve it right now. Okay, I'm back. Did I take long? No, just by looking, I realized, just by looking, you can tell acceleration is equal to a change of velocity over time. Therefore, acceleration is equal to change in velocity over change in time. Okay, or just time like that. So, uh, I can easily divide 25 over 2 will give me 12.5. Uh, 50 over 10 will give me 5, which is this. Then 15 will give me 3, this will give me 4. So, my answer there is a motorbike. Okay, the motorbike, when its speed changed from 0 to 50 in 10 seconds. Number 8, a spring which obeys Hooke's law extends from 10 to 25 centimeters by a force of 15 newtons. What force extends the same spring by 13? You have to find the extension. Okay, you have to find the extension. And then you have to create a ratio between the two extensions. Therefore, according to me, this was a... Um, uh, extension uh, force and the extension is it caused and then the new force and the extension it would cause therefore the force applied firstly is 15 which is this one here and its extension or the extension it, it caused was the change from 10, 20, 10 to 25 therefore I subtract 25 minus 10 gives me 15 therefore the extension was 15 and the force that brought about that extension was 15 therefore here the extension is 13 therefore the force that would bring about this extension is F1 therefore my final answer is 13 newtons Okay, 13 newtons would bring about an extension of 13 centimeters in this spring in question 8. Next question. Question 9 right there. The diagram below shows the uniform beam pivoted at the center. It supports three weights. W1, W2, W3, uh, D1, D2, D3. Also, uh, force 1 at the distance D4. Okay. Um... Uh, for this to be in equilibrium, is it in equilibrium? Yes, in uniform, yeah, for uniform being pivoted at the center. Um, the only correct expression here is A. Each force will be multiplied by its by a distance uh, or its distance or its perpendicular distance from the pivot. Therefore, W1 will be multiplied by D1, okay? And then uh, W2, D2. W3, D3, F1, okay, D4. This is weight, weight, weight. Weight is downward force, like caused by gravity. But this one cannot be labeled W, it should just be force because it's upward. So it's going to be F1, D4. So my correct expression there is A. Take a look at it. Pause the movie and take a look at it. Number 10, which of the following is a correct statement when mass of a uniform object is increased? Okay, when mass of a uniform object is increased, I had to use Newton's third law of motion here to simply try and see what would happen. My answer came out as D. Um, mass is inversely proportional to the acceleration of the of the constant force. If the force is constant, reduce mass, then acceleration will increase. If the force is constant, increase mass, then acceleration will reduce. So when one when mass increases, acceleration reduces. When acceleration increases, mass reduces. They are inversely proportional. So D is the answer. And by eleven, there the diagram below shows the weight uh, weight lift lifting masses through a height of one point eight meters. Take G to be ten. What is the mass being lifted if the gravitational potential energy increased by uh, forty five hundred joules? So I use the formula for GPE, where this is the expression here. We're looking for the mass. Okay. What is the mass being lifted? So I make M to be my capital. After I do my calculation, this is already given is 4,500 joules. Therefore, the height, which is H, is 1.8. The G is a 10. So my final answer comes out as 250 kilograms. What? I can 250. I can do 500 kilograms. So we get to the next question. That's a question 12. A tennis ball is dropped into a horizontal surface, onto a horizontal surface. As the ball bounces up and down, the height of each bounce gradually decreases. During the motion of the ball, my answer was this. Okay, so um, the answer for question 12 is C. Total energy, energy of the ball, ground and air is constant, not D. So look out for question 12. And I say so because um, the ball's bouncing was gradually decreasing and I didn't look, that, look at that. So check it out. Check that out.
I fell for D. Um, number 13, at constant, at a construction site, an escalator is used to carry 20 workers each of average mass 75 kilograms to a height of 8 meters in one minute. What power is needed to lift the workers to their working site? Power is equal to work over time. My calculation is here. Therefore, work is equal to force times distance. Therefore, this is this is the weight okay, of each worker. This is an escalator being lifting workers. So this is the weight of each worker times the number of workers, which is 20, then times the distance through which these 20 people are being lifted over 60 seconds because it takes one minute, convert it to seconds. My final answer is 2,000 joule per second or what? Okay, so my answer there is B. Number 14, the diagram. This 14, I really tried to maneuver around it. I don't know, I couldn't find the answer, but because it was going off, uh, mechanical advantage here load over effort this is my my load 280 effort is 40 my answer is coming out as skisty but among the answers there's no skisty i don't know where i'm missing it this will be your homework okay this will be your homework so this one this is these are circumferences of the axle and the wheel okay um uh and then you can still calculate velocity ratio by uh, dividing the radius is the driving over the driven here the effort is the driving the L is the driven the load is the driven and then when I do my calculations here it's giving me 43 percent efficiency so I got lost people I got lost so you should help me on this one but for the rest I think I've tried so number 15 the four tires of a car of total weight 12 this is pressure grade 10 the last topic uh, the, four pre the, the four tires of a car of total weight to 12,000 newtons are at a pressure of 25 kilopascal. Uh, the area of each tire in contact with the ground is, you go to the formula for pressure, pressure is equal to force over area, therefore make area the subject, force is given as 12,000 newtons, then pressure is given as uh, its kilo, okay, its kilo here, I didn't just put its kilo, it is a thousand, okay, this is 250,000, the kilo means thousand, pascal, this is supposed to be small k, Kilo is small K, not capital K. Capital K is Kelvin. So my final answer was coming out as 4.8 exponential negative 2 meter squared. That's my area. When you do your punching properly, I just didn't want to uh, extend the calculations there. Question 16. The, um, the drawing pin is easily pushed into the wooden board. Okay, the drawing pin is easily pushed into the, into the wooden board. This is because the small area of the point increases the pressure. So A is our answer there. Number 17, a diagram below shows a liquid in glass thermometer which consists of a bulb containing a liquid. The liquid can expand into a very thin capillary tube. That's our bulb right there, then capillary tube, the scale. Okay, um, if the liquid of the thermometer is replaced by another liquid that expands more for the same in temperature rise, then the new thermometer will have, my answer was greater range and quick response. If the new liquid can expand quicker, meaning it's more sensitive to change of um, uh, same change in temperature, one liquid gets way high, meaning it's sensitive. Okay, same change in temperature, the other liquid just uh, expands to a certain level, not like the other one. So my answer there is A, high sensitivity and greater range. My answer is A. Number 18, um, the boiling liquid, a boiling liquid absorbs thermal energy, which is heat at a rate of 45 watts. The specific heat, latent heat of vaporization is 22.7 exponential 6 joule per kg. How much liquid is vaporized in 9 seconds? I use this formula here for power. Power is equal to energy over time. This is actually work. Okay, energy, the formulas for work can be actually be formulas for energy. They share the same formulas. Because the amount of work done is equal to the amount of energy converted to other forms. There can never be any work if energy is not converted to other forms. So this is our formula. Therefore, make E the subject. Then I do my calculations here. The energy is 243,000 joules. Then I come to the formula for latent heat. Uh, latent heat is denoted as uh, Q or heat energy in the formula for latent heat is denoted as Q. So I didn't use E, but I've shown you say E is equals to Q and Q is this one. Then this is just uh, LV, which is latent heat of vaporization. So finally, this is the formula. Um, finally, I make M the subject to find the kilograms. I have the heat here, which is this energy here. And then I have the constant, the, which has been given to me, the latent heat, const, uh, amount of latent heat, which is uh, this one here, 2.7 exponential 6. I do my divisions, my final answer comes out in kgs. Remember, the answer is in kgs. This is kg here. Um, so when converted to grams, it comes out as 90 grams. My answer there is C. 
Which one of the following is the correct definition of temperature of an object? A measure of the particle kinetic energy. The, the temperature of an object is a measure of the average kinetic energy of particles in an object. My answer there is D. Okay, D. Uh, number 20, a wavelength of sound. The wavelength of sound is the same in all media. Is the same in all media. Uh, let me check this one out again. Just one minute. Okay, so my answer still stands. It's A. If I shout in air like this, I don't think my voice will change its pitch. It will change its, its wavelength and become very small. You know, I think that's how I think some animals. Uh, okay, let me just go off road right now. I've seen people who keep dolphins. What if? How is a dolphin able to differentiate voices? If the voices, okay, this, okay, okay, let me not go that far. But the thing is, I think it's the same. I think it's the same. Proving this would simply take a lot of time. Let's move to the next question. Question 21, the diagram below shows the waves in a ripple tank in which water in parts X and Y is of different depths. Okay, um, you can tell that this one is deeper, this one is shallower. So how do the waves, wavelengths of the, and the speeds V1 and V2 of the wavelengths compare in X and Y? Uh, my answer there was D, wavelength in Y is greater. You can tell so these are wavelengths, okay. Um, then uh, speed is greater, okay. Water is moves faster when it's a lot, when the depth is high. When the, the depth is shallow, it moves slower. So V2 is greater. V2 is greater. Number 22, the diagram below shows how displacement varies with time in a wave. Uh, when a wave, time as a wave passes through a fixed point. What is the frequency of the wave? Frequency, that's the formula there. Uh, therefore, 2 over 4. This is 4, which is the time, then I counted the number of waves, this is one wave, then two waves, two cycles in four seconds. Okay, two cycles in four seconds. Therefore, my wave, my frequency is half. My frequency is half, not C, okay, not C, but B is our answer there. Next question, um, if the angle of incidence for light traveling from air to glass is 45 and the refractive index of glass is 1.51 what is the angle of refraction i simply write the snail's law here refractive index is equals to sine i over sine r sine this is the refractive index we have 45 as our angle of incidence remember um, when calculating the refractive index always take the angle of incidence to be the one on the side where there is less density on the side where the media has got less density so if the angle of incidence for light traveling from air to glass, so this becomes our angle of incidence automatically. Even if the light was moving out of glass, would have gone for the one on the side where there's less density. So when I do my divisions here, I simply make this expression the sine inverse uh, multiplied by this fraction here gives me 28 degrees, and my answer is A. My answer is A. Hopefully we know how to punch sine inverse and what I just did here. Number 24, the diagram below shows the passage of a ray of light through a triangular glass block. Our angle of incidence is D. We always take the angle, I mean the critical angle to be the one inside the more dense material, um, which is at a magnitude where the angle of refraction is 90 degrees to the normal. Okay, so our answer there is D. 25, the human eye contains a converging lens system which produces an image at the back of the eye. If the eye views a distant object, what type of image is produced? A real, inverted, and small or diminished. Those are properties of the images produced or the image produced. At 26, the diagram below shows a learner standing once the, once the five meters in front of the wall. He claps his hands once. After how long? Uh, after how long? After how long after the hand clap does he hear the echo? Speed in sound is given to be 330, sometimes it's given to be 340, so you'll be on the lookout. So formula for, for speed of sound using echo method has a two here. Instead of just saying speed is equal to distance over time, there's a two because you're using echo. The sound has to go and come back, therefore it has to cover the distance twice. So you've got 2D there. And even the time, it is time for the, the going and the coming. Okay, the going and the coming. So that's my formula there. So I make T my subject, and finally my answer comes out at one second. Therefore, our answer there is 1.0 seconds. Actually, always put at least one decimal place or so two decimal places for the sake of accuracy.
Uh, 27 um, north and south is a magnet which is brought near two steel uh, metal bars labeled RT and PQ as shown in the figure below. So you take a look at those figures, you pause the movie to look at them. It's me who is writing this, okay, to simply try to see if S attracts them, this is north. If S, you know, this is south if they repel. This is north because they have repelled. This is not south because they have attracted. From this, it can be concluded that or deducted that there is a permanent magnet, um, magnetic north pole at R and P. Our answer here is C. 28. A piece of steel can be magnetized by stroking in uh, stroking it with a magnet as shown in the diagram below. Therefore, the stroking pole there is a south pole from a permanent magnet. Steel is a hard magnetic material, therefore it doesn't easily get magnetized. But once magnetized, it doesn't easily get demagnetized. When the magnet is moved in the direction shown, which poles are produced at X and Y? Therefore, the pole produced here is the one similar to the stroking pole. And the pole produced at the end where the uh, stroking pole is lifted up is opposite to the stroking pole. So this will be a south and this will be a north. So X is a south, north is a Y. Yes, north is a Y. 29. Uh, what is static electricity? An imbalance of electric charges within a material. Okay, D is our answer. 30. An electric, uh, if electricity costs 0.6 quarter per unit, what is the cost of heating a tank of water with uh, a 3000 emission heater for 1 hour 30 minutes? Cost of electricity, that's the formula, is equal to units times unit price. I didn't know the units, I first of all had to calculate the units. Units are actually energy. Therefore, energy is equal to power times time. The power should be in kilowatts. Therefore, I divide this by 1000, converting it to kilowatts. Then the time should be in hours. This is 1 hour 30 minutes. I've just expressed it as um, a decimal. 1.5 hours times 3 gives me 1.5 units. Okay, the unit for energy in um, business with uh, or commercial unit for electricity is a kilowatt hour. Therefore, this is in kilowatts, this is in hours. So when you multiply it, it gives you kilowatt hour. So 4.5 is a unit. So I plug my 4.5. The unit price is given as 0.6 quarter, so or skisting way. Therefore, finally, finally, the actual price for heating this amount of water for 130 minutes will be 2 quarter 70 way. Okay, our answer is C. Number 31, a light bulb needs about um, 0.25 ampere of light um, uh, to light brightly, okay, of current to, right, to light brightly. What charge has moved through the light bulb after it has been lit for 10 minutes? Therefore, the formula for charge is equals to IT, Q is charge. In the other formula for latent heat, Q is also used to represent heat, so be cautious on that one. Charge is equals to IT, current times, time, time in seconds, current in uh, amperes. Remember, here this is the only time when you can have power in kilowatts and have time in hours because we watch movies in hours, we cook things in many minutes so we cannot use seconds. So always remember when it comes to calculations of cost of electricity, convert power to kilowatts and time to hours. But everywhere else, your time goes back to seconds. So 10 times skisti gives me 600 seconds. Uh, amperes are in amps. When I do my math here, it gives me one skisti, I mean 150 columns. 150 columns. The answer is B. Question 32 right there. Question 32. A diagram below shows the high voltage uh, cables used to transmit electric power. This is the national grid. The purpose of the transformer B is to step down. It's about to, power is about to be fed to domestic, uh, for domestic circuit or to domestic circuit. It has to be stepped down. A is step up, B is step down. Number 33. Uh, we have our motor effect right there. There's a video on motor effects, electromagnetic induction. Check it out. So uh, a, a current flows in a wire hanging uh, between the poles of a magnet. In which direction does the wire move? The direction is A. Use Fleming's left hand rule. Use Fleming's left hand rule. Check out the video on electromagnetic induction and you'd know how I came up with A. Because I'll, I'll consume so much time if if I delay we're already uh, we may reach one hour number 34 um, a cathode ray oscilloscope when a, in a cathode ray oscilloscope when the deflections of the spot with time base on okay when the deflections of the spot with time base on is on with time base is on which of the following diagrams shows y input zero therefore which diagram shows no deflection in the y the answer is a here the 
uh, the top plate is positive, the bottom plate is positive. Here it's, it's busy, everything is happening. This is there's no deflection in the wire here, so answer is A. Number 35 the diagram here below shows some circuit symbols, therefore, this is electronics. Uh, which is the correct order of the symbols above? This is uh, a light dependent resistor, this is a diode, and this is uh, a fuse. If there's no line in the box, that's a, a resistor. So, diode is a uh, one, okay. Light dependent resistor is a two. Um, what? What was I writing here? So, diode is one, yes, so one here. Light dependent resistor. Diode is one. No, diode is on number two. Light dependent resistor is on number one. Then electric fuse is on number three. Yes, I'm correct. The answer there is C. The answer there is C. We're getting to the end of the paper, question 20 36. The diagram below shows uh, a truth table. Okay, which gate is shown by the truth table? This is the O gate, okay, uh, which simply uh, if A or B. If A or B is high, then the output will be high. If both are high, then still more the output will be high. Check out the truth tables, check out uh, the logic gates, check out the, their circuits or simple circuits that represent them, then you'd understand what I, 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 I've just, uh, why I've landed on A. Number 37, the diagram below shows the horizontal beam of electrons entering a region between two charged plates. These are negative and positive. Um, electron beam, electrons are negatively charged, therefore they will be attracted to the upper part. They are negative, so they will be attracted to the positive terminal, therefore they will be deflected upwards. Answer is A. Number 38, which of the following is the correct statement for nuclear fusion? There is fission and there is fusion. To fuse means to come more or less fertilization. They come together, they enter into each other and form a much bigger mass. So mass is gained in the process and energy is released is the answer. Fission involves a splitting of a large nucleus by shooting it or bombarding it with a neutron. So fission will be the opposite of fusion. 39. The diagram below shows the activity of a radioactive source over a period of time. Therefore, look at the activity over time. What is the half-life? And I just look at the diagram. My starting point is 120. Half of 120 is skisti. Therefore, at skisti, I simply bring this one down. After how long did it come to skisti? Half its original amount. It took two minutes. So my answer here comes out as B. Okay, B is our answer there. 40, our last question. And then I will close this paper. Maybe forever, because we have a record of it. Uh, 40, the paper contains a powder. Contains 400 milligrams of radioactive isotope that emits uh, particles. Okay. Uh, the half-life of the isotope is five days. Uh, what mass of this isotope remains after 10 days? Therefore, 10 days is the period of time. And in these 10 days, how many half-lives are there? There are actually two. So this is the number of half-lives. Therefore, T over half-life. It's going to be 10 over half, which is two. Which is two there. So the formula is quantity remaining, original quantity times number of half-lives, or half-life to the power n. So this is the original quantity. We're looking for the quantity remaining. How many half-lives? Two. So we put half-life to the power two. This gives us 400 times half times half. Finally, the answer is 100 milligrams, and our answer is C. You can also use that other formula. You use the table, but even this one can still do. Uh, this marks the end of this paper, which is a 5054 2018 paper one physics. Okay. Have a good study time. Bye bye for now.